For this lesson, we will determine the intercepts of a function. So we've talked a little bit already about how to find x and y intercepts. Um, it's really the same idea. So this is going to be specifically functions defined by y equals f of x, meaning that y is going to be all by itself, whereas before it was not necessarily. So it will either be y or it will be f of x, and that will be on one side of the equation. To find the x-intercepts, we need to find all the solutions to the equation f of x equals 0. So that's just fancy math talk for y is going to be 0, same as we had before. And then the y-intercept is given by f of 0. Of course, same thing. That means x is going to be 0. So we're going to have y equals 0, and we're going to have x equals 0, and we're going to find whatever those intercepts are. So here is a function. Again, one time I'm going to let f of x equal 0, and the other time I'm going to let x equal 0. So one time I'm going to say f of 0, which of course is just like saying y. 0 squared is 0 minus 9 is negative 9, and that would be, of course, my um, x-intercept would be 0 comma negative 9. Excuse me, that's my y-intercept. For my x-intercept, I would add the 9 to each side, so 9 equals x squared. I would take the square root to get plus or minus 3. So for my x-intercepts, I'm going to have negative 3, 0, and positive 3, 0. So there are two of them. For my y-intercept, I will just have 1 at 0, negative 9. Next, again, now I have a function g of x. So one time, I'm going to set 0 for g of x. And the other time, I'm going to find g of 0 which means 0 minus 5 plus 2. So for this one, I would subtract the 2. So I would have negative 2 equals the absolute value of x minus 5. That doesn't work because I can't have an absolute value equal to a negative. So there would be no x-intercepts. Never going to cross the x-axis. For the y-intercept, g of 0 is 0 minus 5 plus 2. So that gives me 0 minus 5 is negative 5. I take the absolute value of negative 5, which is positive 5, plus 2 is 7, which means when I plugged in 0, 7 came out. So that is my y-intercept. Here's another for us to try. Again, if I'm trying to find the x-intercept, I make y equal 0, which means h of x is equal to 0. And if I'm trying to find the y-intercept, then I make x equals 0. So h of 0 equals 4 minus radical 0. And then I'm going to solve each. For this one, I would probably just add that radical x so that it's positive. So I have radical x equals 4. To find the solution, I would square to get x equals 16, which means 16 comma 0. Over here, I would take 4 minus the square root of 0. The square root of 0 is 0, and 4 minus 0 is 4. So my y-intercept is 0, comma, 4. One for you to try on your own, so press pause, try the question, then press play to check your work. For the first, again, I'm going to replace g of x with 0 and then solve, and for the second, I'm going to replace x with 0 and solve. So over here, which is of course where I'm finding my x-intercepts, again, I would take that um, minus uh, absolute value of x and add it, so I get the absolute value of x equals 2, which means x would be either negative 2 or positive 2, because if I plugged in negative 2, the absolute value makes it positive. If I plug in positive 2, the absolute value makes it positive. So my intercepts are negative 2, 0 and 2, 0. For my y-intercepts, I would take 2 minus the absolute value of 0, which is, of course, 0, and get 2. So my y-intercept is 0, comma, 2.